Okay, so so moving on, right? Obviously, you've just signed your new contract with Edinburgh. That you're now a stalwart team. But you take take me back to the first contract. You're 21 years old. Most of your mates, same age as me, are all kicking about in university. We're living for a Wednesday night. Somebody's gone there and gone. We're going to make you a full time professional rugby player. What's that? What's that feeling like as a 21 year old? Like how? Like what is uh, it like, overwhelming? Like do do you actually remember most of it, or is it just like a sense of like? This is the thing that felt nah, like a dream nah. for so long, and now it's here. Yeah, I, I, I remember it quite well uh, because it was very stressful, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I think the, st- the season started in May or June. Um, contract negotiations happen about uh, September, November. The year prior. Uh, I, the, yeah, so like six or seven months before that right okay right, right. um so negotiations happen around that time you might you might sign december january mm-hmm. uh so you've got about four or five months before the season actually starts but i ended up signing end of march uh <laughs> and i had like a month like, or two I months like before that. the season started pre-season i like that miss out on pre-season <laughs> well <laughs> coach, coach i'll be fit i swear i'll be fit don't worry <laughs> It was, it was more that um, because it was the, the time Richard Cockrell stepped in. I was going to say, and, you, you arrived at the same time as him almost. Well, I say arrived. Yeah. Him, yeah. And it was it was Alan Solomons before that. Mm. And he was like, yeah, we'll offer you a contract. No worries. And mm. then obviously Richard Cockrell hadn't really seen any of my rugby. He hadn't seen me play. Uh, and he, he he didn't didn't really know if I, if if he was going to sign me or not. Um, mm-hmm. But luckily, I, I signed a, a one plus one, so an academy contract plus uh, second year as a pro. So it, it wasn't as if I kind of signed straight pro, but I, I knew I had that professional contract in the second year, so I had something to, yeah, to look like, forward like to. A, but... Like a prove it deal, like a prove it deal. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was overwhelming. Um, I was chuffed to bits when I managed to sign it. It's Obviously, starting rugby when I was young, it's all I wanted to do, really. So well, that's that's the thing. I was like, what's it like? So you're 21 years old. You've now got this academy contract. All your mates are, because obviously in the borders, we're very much like you just get yourself, get to work. Some some of us go to uni. Some of us just go and get to work. What's it like when you're doing that pro contract? All your mates are kicking about, like living the dream. Um, I don't know even how to describe. It. Like, what's it, what's it just like as a pro player when a lot of your mates aren't pro athletes? Like, if that makes sense. So obviously, you've still got like the boys back home. Like, you still keep in touch with the boys, and yeah, um, I mean, it's you kind of you you've got your old mates, but you jump from uh, friend group to friend group, and um, you try and keep in touch with them as much as possible, and it, it is difficult. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, it's a difficult question because they, they'll obviously be wondering, or oh, how how is he getting on and um, stuff like that. But I think a lot of my friends from school, uh, they they went on to play further rugby, sign for clubs and and Super Six, and and go to university. And I think it's more of the people that went to university that I've not really kept in touch with. Um, Right. We'll me- message now and then, um, and obviously if I saw them in the street, we'd chat for ages. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, they, it does kind of grow a, more like a distant relationship. Uh, mm-hmm. But you, you just kind of grow closer and closer to your rugby mates, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. like so Craig Pringle, he's and Andrew Grant Sati, they've both gone on to university and, and jobs post university uh mm-hmm. very, like two two of my best mates but don't keep in touch with them as as much as i'd like uh mm-hmm. just because i think when when they're free at a weekend i'm playing or i'm busy but then if i'm free or got a holiday then they're they're doing something else so in that respect it's it's very difficult you just kind of you, you keep to your friends that you you play week in week in week in week out with uh, because you know when they're going to have time off and you can you do stuff together because you're both three so yeah of course it, it is difficult I can go back have we have we got the same mug by any chance 
Aye, not until I've drunk this. <laughs> so I just noticed that I was. Hey, that's, that's definitely going in the fact we've got the same mug. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> just standard coffee. Tesco. <laughs> oh, mate. I think I. Do you know what? I genuinely think I got this for my. This, Sean. This can go back in the podcast, but this this is meant to be off script. But this is going in the podcast. Yeah, this is the best Mother's Day present I think I've ever got, and I don't think my mum's had a chance to use it once. Like it generally just lives with me, just up and right. down. Yeah, I just went in Tesco looking for a big cup of tea mug for the evening. So <laughs> find this. There you go. Did the job. Yeah, the one where it's like I don't need to go back to the kettle for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you actually touched on my next question quite well. So obviously you and you and Richard Cockerell, you pretty much he gets the job at the same time you get your academy contract. Did it almost feel better having a sort of like a brand new coach? Like it was almost like Edinburgh was like like you could, like it's quite clear that Edinburgh sort of changed as a club since Cockerell took over. It's like it's became obviously you had like I feel like when the badge changed as well, like everything like it was like the rebrand. It's like this is the new Edinburgh. And like, there's no doubt about it, like the rugby's improved. You're now uh, you are you have literally become a consistent part of the squad. Like, how did it feel like when Richard came in? Were you just like, this is like I've got a brand new clean slate to sort of work from here. Like everybody's on the same playing field. Yeah, I think it was it was good and it was difficult at the same time. Um, you know, R- Richard Cockrell's uh, experience and the players that he knows. Like, and he, that he was bringing in was was obviously very good for the team and what, what he did for the team was very good. Um, but then with that brings competition. Mm-hmm. So the the likes of bringing in Juan Pablo Cicino, Matt Scott. And I think that was good for my game. It developed my game, watching them and training alongside them, playing alongside them. Uh, that helped me a lot. Um, and pushed me on further just for the competition. Uh, but initially, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is going to be very difficult to get into the team. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I think it was uh, it was a difficult start uh, the first season for me just because when we played pre-season, uh, the, I think it was the second year, the, the year before that, I maybe got capped once or twice. And... The second season, uh, we were playing pre-season games and obviously the Scotland Sevens boys came in to train with us mm-hmm. uh, and they, they were getting a shot in the games and I wasn't really get, getting a look in. So for me, that was that was quite difficult, um, especially when there was players getting played that weren't going to be there that following season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I spoke to, to Cockers about it and he was, he was very good, um, kind of explained where where I wanted to be playing, uh, where I preferred playing, and and he was it was kind of like a consensus between the both of us um, that that I'd get a shot at twelve at training uh, just to see how it'd go because um, I think pr- predominantly I came as a thirteen, I came mm. out of Melrose as a thirteen, and then hadn't played too much at twelve just when I was younger, um, yeah. and said to him I'd I'd like to. Have a have a crack at twelve, and um, so he got me in there at training, and then mm. it just kind of it went from there. But I was in loads I, of I, I conversations that, yeah. with people. I love that, like young brass neck twenty one year old. I will take crash ball responsibility. Just give me. Yeah. <laughs> I will do. I will take the batter and for the, the eighty minutes if it gets me on the pitch. Yeah. No, that, mean, that, that it's, was it. It's, had it's, it. it's worked off. Like you're you're pretty much the stalwart in the you're one of the stalwarts in the Edinburgh team now. Like it's a, you're a name on the team sheet for sure. Like one of the first time. So it has paid yeah, off. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it is a, every time uh, I see that team sheet go getting put up on the Monday morning or Tuesday morning. Um, and if my name's there, it's it's amazing. It's really good. It's it's another cap, and um, but it's. It's obviously not taken for granted. The competition, as I said before, is still there. Mm. Um, like say, the Christine, he's been going very well. So we, we're kind of battling out at the minute. Um, but it's, it's good. He's very experienced. So we bounce ideas off each other, train together. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's good. But I was going to say, yeah, you're, you're quite unfortunate with the 
one of the positions that like Scotland seems to have quite an abundance of at the moment, and Scotland and at the pro club level is the centres. And I like your name adds to that. Like it's very much a case of it's like when you talk about Scotland centres, George Taylor is a name, but it's like you like like you say the competition is so high at your position, unfortunately. Which is even more unlucky. Yeah. Than there's technically two centre positions, and it's still a high competition play. I mean, obviously yeah, we all know no, it's very exactly. different, but. Um, yeah, so, I've... Okay, oh, on. Sorry, on. Carry, carry, no, carry on. Just people want to hear you talk, not me. You carry on if you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, obviously just reiterate what you said. It's the, there are a lot of good centres, and um, if if twelve isn't available, I, I'd take thirteen. But then <laughs> there's uh, there's two great centres <laughs> at thirteen at Edinburgh as well. So you, it's uh, it's so, difficult. For the, for the record, cockers, I'll take H two O on the back of my shirt now if it gets me on the. <laughs> Right, mate, I'm going to ask you about it. Right, it's, so obviously, given insight to when we filmed this, the Scotland squad just got released yesterday for the summer tour. Obviously, there's a few big names away with the Lions tour. What do you think of it? I think it's quite good. Like, what's it like seeing the names going in? Really good, yeah. Um, you've got 10 guys from Edinburgh, a lot of youngsters in there, which is good to see. Um, like Jack Blay and Jamie Hodgson getting the first mm -hmm. opportunity to train with the squad. Um, and Luke Crosby and Charlie Shield as well. So they've uh, both been in and about it, training with them before. But I think it's a it's a great opportunity for the young boys to step up and and show what they've got, especially in the the Scotland A game. That will mm. that will be the first game that they play. Um, so yeah, actually really exciting to to see how the guys go. Right now, I'm going to say this, and you don't have to take any association with this because I don't want you to get in trouble. But I think you should have been in there. And this is not me saying this because you're on the podcast. And this is not me saying it because I've known you for 10 years. But I will say, I think you should have been in that team. Like, was there, w did you expect to be called up for the team? Were you just kind of like, were you like, were you proper like, there's a chance? Like, there's a chance. Or were you just kind of like, if it happens, it happens. But Yeah, it was It was more if it happens, it happens. Like, there, there was no expectation. But, um. Obviously, you you try and chance your luck, and from previous conversations that I've had, it it, it wouldn't have been a like I, I would have been extremely happy to be in. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, it, it's just just another kick up the rear to to get better. So um, yeah, it's I like that. Bit, that's a nice, that's a nice positive attitude for it. I like that. <laughs> Bit gutted I'm not in, but you know, there's 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 more doors to be opened, I guess. Yeah, mate. Archer Field will be there all summer. You'll be fine. That's it. The boys, the boys, <laughs> the boys will be in Georgia, and you'll be sat there going, "Oh, lads, it's terrible here. It's only like 23 degrees, like criminal. I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna cope." <laughs> I'll, I'll Jimmy be. Hodgson, I'll be Jimmy Hodgson is getting run over by like a pack that is like a combined like, 1,100 kilos, and you're just playing golf. Yeah. I'll be thinking 12 footers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 